Thank you for joining me. This is Fly My Mavic. This is the Phantom 3 Pro camera, and this video is going to be about repairing the black screen of death that occurs on this particular camera. Now, as you know, I have done uh, a video on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, and I've done one on the Phantom 2 Vision. I have a friend who sends me boards for repair. I'm just going to just open the box he sent me and take out the new ones that he sent me for repair. What we're going to do is we're going to go through the repair process and hopefully uh, get these to work. Now he sent me two, which is good, and uh, these are one of the boards here. As you can see, it has the fan on it, and um, it's pretty much the same as the Phantom 2 uh, Vision Plus and the Phantom 2 Vision, whereas you have to connect up some wires and then flash them all. Now, um, I don't use um, the TTL to USB adapter that I used in the last one. Uh, I use uh, this rig here, which has the cables already set up for me. And I just basically have to just make a little bit of adjustment to it to make it as far over as I can. But the wire's going to be coming up that way to the board. Now, if you haven't got one of these, don't worry. These are available on eBay. They're great for holding circuit boards. And you can see the TTL to USB adapter uh, mounted there. What you are going to need to make is something like this. Uh, this is two wires here and then a wire here. And the reason being is there are two little pads, which I don't want to be able to zoom in on because they're that small. Uh, two little pads here, which you have to uh, solder those two wires to, and then you have to connect it to the 3.3 volts uh, on the board here. And then there's a program to run. Now, luckily for you guys, uh, I have got the program on my laptop uh, here. Um, no, I'm not downloaded it yet. Let's download it and we can, uh, I'll show you how to download it. Let me just switch over to my desktop. If you go to uh, the following web address, which is github forward slash judge slats and return and you'll see here. What you want to do is just go to the first one here and then once you're on that page there, if you just go to judge slat there and then you should find the P3P flash tool here. Just click on that and then click on code and download zip and then it'll ask you to save the file which we're going to do click on ok i'll put links to this uh, in the description box below anyway uh, just in case you get lost at any point during this uh, this video right so it's going to just open that up and we're going to double click in there bloody winra double click in there and then we're going to just run the p3p flash and it should come up with a box here it's going to extract to C users your account name and then a program called P3P Flash. Just want to close that box at the back out for a second. Uh, there's a warning there. Um, you have to install Net Framework 4.5, that's the Flash tool won't work. Click on Extract and you'll see it should add a shortcut to the desktop down here. Uh, right, let's just close out that. We've got that for now. We don't need any more of that. So we'll run that shortly. Let's just go back to the webcam. Right, okay, so the first thing you need to do, obviously, is get this board ready uh, for soldering. You can use flux if you want to. Um, I usually do. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, is just separate that board from its holder. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you why in a moment. Let's take out this screw that holds it in place there. Pop that on there, and then you just need to flick this board out of its little holder, like that. And then using this holder here, I can just move that across a little bit measure up for it like so and then I'm going to just push that in and sign it up and that will then hold it in place for me like that oh, tighten that up and obviously don't swing it too much because there are a couple of wires on that uh, plate there that's connected to the main board so I'm going to put on my, uh, my big glasses and I've got a set of these by the way uh, they do come in handy for doing this kind of work because you get a little light on it as well, so you can light up the circuit board. I'm just going to put this one a little bit. Right, okay, first thing I want to get is some flux. I'm going to just flux up the two little sockets at the bottom here. They're marked BT01 and BT00. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just drop some solder on those two points. Before the flux dries out. Not easy, because they are very, very small. So bear with me a second while I try and get these done. Think getting the solder is the hard part? No, the hard part is actually getting the wires to go on later. There we go. 
Right, they're both sorted out. I'm getting my flips again. I'm just going to flip up the other ones. I'll put a little on the tool here. Let me just show you the tool in a second. Um, switch back to webcam uh, desktop. If I just run the tool, you will see it has a uh, install in terror term, uh, solder points, and solder points with wires. This will open up a picture of where everything connects to, like that. So don't worry about what I'm doing at the moment. I will go through it all in a little while. So let me just get these sorted out first of all. Uh, so that's so it's all sorted up. So I'm going to connect my wires to it. And uh, I have to do this one first of all. Now this one is really fiddly because I'm going to get those two on those little uh, little jumper pads down there. Okay, with those two soldered on, you then need to just take this wire here. You need to connect that to the 3.3 volt. Again, watch the wires there. You don't want to pull those wires or else you'll end up pulling the pads off and that's not what you want to do. Pulling the pads off is game over. Simple as that. Watching what I'm doing there. Okay, right. My 5 volt goes to here. And my, light, my negative goes to the ground one and again don't worry there's pictures of where all the wires go to you should be all right uh, and then my white one goes there like that and my green one goes next to it very carefully don't pull the wires again and i should be very very sorry okay just to show you this board, it's all connected up, as you can see, a little green light flashing away. You can see the wires are all connected there. Sorry if it's a little bit out of focus, it's not easy on a, a camera like this. But you can see the two red wires at the bottom connects to the BT zeros, and you've got all the other wires connected on the board. Simple as that, and that means you're ready to go. Right, with all that wired up, I know it looks a bit of a mess, but it's fine, it should be. It's now time to see whether or not that has uh, worked okay. Now, uh, I've listed as using uh, Terra Term, and I found a new program called Zoc7. Okay, um, so, yeah, the tool, as I said, uses, um, I've said to use Terra Term. Um, I do prefer to use a program called Zoc7. I do find it works better. Zoc7 is available on the web. And click on, you need to make sure the connection type is serial, and if you click on the configure, you get to put the speed in there, etc. That's what it should look like. Just pause the screen, make a note of that, because that's what it should look like. So I'm going to run module, and you can see I'm getting the boot me, boot me message that means this board is now ready to have its instructions written to. So I'm going to run the tool, and click on there, and it says quite clearly, Flash Phantom 3 Pro. Uh, it's going to click on that button. Yes, I know the COM port. If you don't know the COM port, click no, it will open Device Manager for you. Uh, yes, press a button. Okay, and we're going to use COM port 3 press enter you will now start the flash this is an automated process so don't touch anything just leave it to run uh, don't interrupt it in a moment it will ask you again for the port number if you don't know one of these before it is a two-stage flash okay so three again and enter now here's the important part let's see whether or not it gets past this part here this is the part where if it's going to go wrong it will go wrong and fingers crossed it's sending image data and it's doing all the reading and writing this looks like it could be a repairable board uh, not all boards are repairable if you have split the ribbon cable there's a, probably an 80 percent chance that the board won't be recoverable if you just left it for very very long and it doesn't work then there's a 99.9 percent .9 chance it will be recoverable if you're one of those in a hot country and you've left your um quad running uh, on the table for instance doing an update um, again, a 90% chance you may not be able to fix it. And the reason for that is because these get really hot, even with the fan, and they end up burning out uh, the, um, the little chip inside. Okay, so once that's done, what I'm going to do is just power the board off for a second. Just going to remove the jumper wire I put on the two little tiny pads. And then I'm going to plug it back in. And then I'm going to run my Zoc7, or you'll run Terra Term which one you want to use and this is what you're looking for it's doing something um, requesting system reboot system restarting and there we go it seems now to be running through all right 
as far as I can see now, that seems to be running fine. It's looking for the video card, and it says requesting system reboot, which I think is working. I've noticed sometimes, depending on which chipset, you don't always get the same outputs. So there's no point me showing you what a good output looks like, um, because it might be different to what you actually will end up with. The only way to know is to take it all apart, put it all back together in the camera, and see whether or not that works. And that is exactly what we're going to do now. Let me just go back to there. So I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to remove the wires I put on earlier. Again, be very, very gentle with these in case you need to put them back on again at some point. Don't just go ripping them off. Let them just come off on their own. And take that one off. That one. That one. And that one. Okay, I'm going to turn my soldering iron off for now. I don't want to leave it on. Just remove from the clamp or whichever method you're using to hold it down. We just need to put the screw back in there which I have got here. Get my, it's a 1.5 mil uh, head on this. If you're hex screwdriver, a uh, hex screw, a uh, 1.5 mil hex driver you're gonna need. Okay, uh, I can put my clamp out the way. I don't need that for the moment. I'll leave that there. And put my solder out the way. I get that. You've got to now reassemble the camera. Uh, not too difficult to do. Uh, just make sure that you put the flat uh, part of this uh, where the uh, grub screw is on that. And it's the same 1.5 mil to tighten it. Uh, don't over tighten it because you might need to adjust it shortly when you go to put it actually onto the uh, onto the phantom. Okay. Um, so now I need a um, transmitter, which I have got here as well. Okay, so transmitter, quad, let's just power this on. And let's just pop the quad on the floor. Don't want to leave it running too long, because as you know, these do overheat. However, my, uh, my studio is quite cool today, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'll just knock the phone. We'll turn the brightness down so you can see what's going on. And plug in, it recognizes it. And we'll go to its DJI Go because it's the old version. And we'll see now whether or not this one has worked. There we go. As you can see, just put your ignore on that. Yeah, it's anti mode, yeah. You can now see that that one has been repaired and it's working fine. Camera tilts up and down, and the aircraft's warming up. That's my little studio there. That's that's the size of my studio. It's not working. Did say that. Right. Okay. So we're we'll to power that all down now. Excuse my squeaky chair. Pull the app. Don't need that for the moment. And that. Right. So you've seen how it all solders together. You've seen how easy. Well, and I say easy. As I say, the, the hardest part is the little two jumpers. You've got to be very, very careful. You don't uh, rip those little jumpers off. Um, let me go back to the. Um, Go back to the tool. I'll, I'll open up them pictures again and show you them pictures properly. Uh, solder points. Let me go back to. I need to switch on my desktop. There we go. Right. So this picture here shows you ground, your 3.3, .3, your 5 volt, your TX, and your RX. And these little pads here, they're the ones you need to uh, solder to this, the 3.3 .3 volt. Hence, use that little sort of Y-shaped cable that I had before. Okay. And uh, so all the points of the wires attached are uh, here. This chap here, he's decided to go with the one wire and bridge BT01 and BT00 uh, into a connector, and he's gone to the 3.3 volt there. This is his TTL to USB adapter that he's using. Uh, again, 5 volt, your TX and your RX up there, and your ground is the black. If you're able to solder those up and you're able to get the boot me message, you are 50% of the way there. Uh, this tool, as I said, requires net framework to be installed. Uh, it'll just crash out if you don't uh, have net framework installed. And it's a lot easier than me trying to explain how to use DOS, etc. Uh, so that's it. Um, really easy to use. Um, and hopefully uh, more of you will now be able to fix your uh, Phantom 3 Pro uh, units. I've got other ones to do now. And obviously because I don't have to explain this one, uh, I'll get it done a lot quicker. Well, that's it. If you've got any questions, uh, please do ask in the comments below. I'll put links to the Phantom Pilots Forum, 
because that has uh, another extensive thread on it uh, in regards to fixing this. And again, my big thanks to all those who contributed quad damage, etc., etc., uh, in the thread because without you people uh, creating the files, writing the instructions, pointing us all in the right direction, uh, we wouldn't do it. And of course, original gangsters must mention them because this is also on the DJI wiki, which I'll put a link to in the description box below. If you don't know what description box is, because not many people do, just underneath the video title, there's a little black arrow at the side. If you click it, it drops down. And there'll be information in there, it's called the description box. I thought I'd put that in because I seem to get people asking questions when I've clearly put the answers in the description box. Um, but I will obviously also pin a comment to the top as well. So that's it, Fire Mavic saying thank you very much indeed. Uh, take care, and if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel, uh, hit the bell notice. Uh, I'm not one of those who uploads daily, uh, you'll hear from me once in a while when I've got something useful to, uh, to put up on my channel. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, as I said, take care, and as always, fly safely.